And so nowhere in the treaties does it say you have to be a Christian in order to receive the, uh, the, uh, the annuity payments. And so that was one of the big uh, issues that we as Native people were faced with. And I think, again, a lot of the conversions were conversions of hunger and of necessity to eat. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but one might ask, how did all this come about? Why? Why was there treaties and why was there what happened what, to in, in Native people? And a lot of it is uh, in what's called Federal Indian Law. The foundations of Federal Indian Law are uh, constantly referring to what was called Papal Bulls from the Vatican from the 15th century which basically said that whenever good Christian nations who believe in the true God of the Bible encounter heathen, pagan, savage nations, it's incumbent upon them to seize their resources and to subjugate them or enslave them or kill them if they don't convert to the true God of the Bible. So these are the papal bulls and there were a series of them which we will uh, accompany uh, this learning uh, package as uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, appendixes, supplements. And then uh, also out of the papal bulls under federal Indian law, there's what's called the doctrine of discovery and the doctrine of conquest. And these are the foundations of the 5,000 plus laws that apply to native people. And that basically says, we discovered you, therefore you and yours is mine and we conquered you, therefore you and yours is mine. And so these uh, papal bulls and the doctrine of discovery and the doctrine of conquest are foundations of federal Indian law and uh, they need to be examined. We need to ask, I believe, the Vatican to send us an apology and rescind the papal bulls, which still haven't been done as of the year 2007. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, there's one other thing. Uh, what was done in this area of Minnesota, at that time we were still considered a territory and territorial America was governed by a document that was put forth by the original colonies and it was called the Northwest Ordinance of 1787 and I believe it's Article 5 and 6 in there talks about the uh, utmost good faith will be carried towards the Indian people and their lands and resources will never be taken away from them and they will never be bothered unless there's ju just wars that are, are declared by Congress. And so that kind of uh, language is, is in the Northwest Ordinance. And so they did the treaties with us. Like for example, the 1855 treaty Minnesota wasn't even a, a, a state then, they were a territory. So we had a territorial government and then, uh, but it was an effort, a part of the building blocks of developing and expanding the continental United States. And uh, we Anishinaabe Ojibwe people happened to be in the way of that development. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and where, were the, where were the minutes found? Yeah. Oh. The uh, minutes were none of your damn business. No. <laughs> they, uh, we found these uh, treaty uh, negotiation minutes were in a book that was called uh, a 1923 lawsuit against the federal government put forth by the Department of Justice on behalf of the, of the Chippewa of the state of Minnesota against the counties, the state, and the federal government over the dams at Leech Lake and the ditching that was done up by Rice Lake on the White Earth Reservation and the seizing of swamplands and some of the other issues related to native people in Minnesota. And uh, there was a tribal member named Willie Heisler in White Earth. He bought a house and in the rafters of the house he found this old book and so we got these uh, minutes from the lawsuit discovery material that was in the book from the lawsuit of June 1923 that uh, came to uh, a, a summation in uh, October of 1923. And so that was a lawsuit that was on behalf of 
Anishinaabe Ojibwe people and the federal government in uh, 1923. Hmm. We've been making copies of the goddamn thing ever since. Uh, wait. <laughs> that one just led to another part. Oh. Don't you rearrange the furniture. There's something you need to talk about. Yeah. <coughs> what, did he, what were you just talking about? The minutes? The, minute, the minutes were part of a lawsuit. Uh, 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 of the dams at Leech Lake. Oh, wild rice. Yeah. The 45,000 acres. Well, I, I don't want to mow uh, anyone else's grass, but read, read the, facts the, uh, the lawsuit, a big uh, impetus or motivation for the lawsuit was the, at the Leech Lake Reservation, the Army Corps of Engineers in the uh, late 1880s and early 1900s put in a series of dams to dam up the lakes and the Mississippi River. And what it did in the process is it flooded 45,000 acres of rice beds and other high ground, which was medicine uh, growing and gathering areas. And also some of our burial cemeteries were in those areas. And so the elders were outraged that there were floating corpses as a result of putting the dams in and the increased uh, flowage of water and also there was the destruction of some 45,000 acres of rice beds at Leech Lake. And the controversy is that the federal government wanted to make a one-time payment to the Leech Lake Reservation for about $15,000 for the loss of that crop of one year in uh, whatever year, I forget, 1923. But what happened, the question is, what happened to all the subsequent years from 1890 through the present time of all the rice harvesting opportunities of uh, poundage, tonnage, if you will, of those uh, producing areas that were ruined, otherwise known as the 45,000 acres, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, good God. We can cut and paste it. Oh, yeah. I think, I think I will. You better. <laughs> I think I